All of these items, I believe, are on the, the FRIFRA 25B exempt list, meaning that those are considered somewhat organic and they have some varying degrees of efficacy when it comes to controlling bugs. Here's the things that I thought were a little confusing. The relative humidity, they want the humidity to be between 50 and 60%. I, I, I'm guessing that's when you spray it. I don't know if it's after you spray it, but if you're spraying outdoor, you can't control the outside humidity. So like, like there's a difference, like in the in trifecta it has drano oil in it and dranafol is allowed for food use. Geranium oil, however, is not. So you know, trifecta may be great use on, on ornamentals, you know, non-consumable products. If you're not going to consume it, Oh yeah, here was something I found kind of interesting. The pH was very caustic. So this has a really high pH to it, which I found kind of interesting. I know our product is, you know, six, eight to seven, two. So we're right there the same with water. Have you ever heard of Trifecta? Well, you're here with Mark Bowell and Holt Crowley on Perfect Garden TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't checked us out on Instagram and Facebook, make sure to do so. Also make sure to look at our $2.99 membership and if you need a little more help on the one-on-one, -on -one, our VIP link is down below in the description. Let's go ahead and get into the video guys. So Holt, thank you so much for coming back onto the channel. I asked you to come, ba I come back on so if you could break down a couple other pesticides and fungicides on the market that people readily go into their hydroponic store, they reach to the on the shelf and they're no normally going to find a few of these different brands or if they go over even to Home Depot, they might start to see these other brands. Uh, today, we're going to cover Trifecta, correct? Yes, Trifecta is the one we'll talk about uh, for now. And uh, I can start anytime you're ready. Sure. Yeah, okay. please. Okay, so let's look at, so what I pulled up here on the screen I'm sharing is this is straight from the Trifecta website. Um, so something I, I try to do when you ask me to, to do these reviews, I look at the, read their website, see everything on there, look for strengths, weaknesses, everything, just to kind of give uh, an overall view for your, for your customer base or for your, your viewer base, I guess, to understand a little deeper dive. So with Trifecta on the ingredient, th this is a comparison chart they put up against what they, I guess, are thinking are their, their top competitors, Trifecta, Mammoth, Green Cleaner, and Lost Coast uh, Plant Therapy. And I believe we did a Lost Coast Plant Therapy uh, review a while back. So um, from an ingredient standpoint, uh, thyme oil, peppermint oil, garlic oil, clove oil, rosemary oil, gerona oil, citric acid, corn oil, isopropyl alcohol, soybean oil, and nanotechnology. And they claim that because uh, with their mixture that it doesn't need a wetting agent or a surfactant type property to help things evenly spread more. That's sort of, um, it seems to be that's part of their claim on their uh, the website. The nanotechnology part is the only other company I've heard that uh, does the nano part is the Pure Crop One product that has corn oil and I think soybean oil and something else in it that they say they nanoparticle oil to make it smaller. They're still dealing with oil, so it kind of has the same thing. Now this one, with Trifecta, you know, I, I'm familiar with thyme oil and all these different oils, and they have different components. Things like peppermint oil or gerana oil, those types are deterrents. So people may have heard of DEET with uh, mosquito sprays that they, you know, they buy deep woods off or something that has uh, DEET in it as a repellent. So these are natural repellent oils. The, the idea is the vapors they put off tend to uh, repel bugs from, from coming. The thyme oil has some different components. Rosemary has some different components. But essentially, you're looking at an oil-based product, even if it's nanoparticleized. Again, with oils, they tend to, uh, the idea with the oils are the, the, for a holistic standpoint, they're suffocants. And the idea behind that is to coat and suffocate the bug. It may have some things to deter the bug. Uh, I know they have a claim on their site about thyme oil being a, a, a basically a disruptor to the plant's eating habits or the, the, the reproductive systems and things like that. They make it where it doesn't want to eat. Citric acid, we know, is, is also another one of the competitor products we have. So when I see Trifecta, in some ways in my head, it's like they took three different products, uh, that being the tripart, um, and threw them all together to come up with something. All of these items, I believe, are on the, the FRIFRA 25B exempt list, meaning that those are considered somewhat organic and they have some varying degrees of efficacy when it comes to controlling bugs. But then again, they're also an oil. And so my concerns, I think we've had this discussion before, my concerns with the oils is always that one, oils tend to clog the stomata so that you're hurting the gas exchange for the plant to breathe in CO2 and breathe out oxygen. Uh, so it can slow that down. 
and they all work to varying degrees. Now, the other consideration with oils um, is that they're going to soak into the plant, and then they're sort of they're going to leave something behind. And and going back to something I've said in the past about what I call my spray and pray uh, issue is a lot of oil type products. You're going to spray, and then you're going to pray and hope that it, it it covered it. Or you might rotate. I know people who will buy two or three products and rotate them through because they're not sure if it uh, if it was effective or not. So they'll have to spray again, spray again. Now with this uh, particular product, I tell you what. Let me switch to another another screen here, and I'll show you. I'll show you something. I'll show you another one. Okay, so this is going to be their usage chart. And, and I'll, I'll give them great credit. Their website looks nice. It looks pretty, somewhat informative, but this will tell you, you know, with the different bug applications they are not, I guess they're not maybe as bug agnostic or they, or they want to um, make you think of the, the top uh, bug issues that you might have when you apply it. And even they, they could talk about um, down here, botrytis and powdery mildew and downy mildew to use it on that. Now, something that I found confusing a little bit from a, a usage standpoint, they'll say cuttings, rooted clones, vegetable cycle, and flower cycle of times to use it. But some things that were kind of, a, you know, I'm not really sure how the grower is going to control this. Maybe on the indoor world, they could control it, but um, you know, in the plant world, it's hard to control your environment. So what they're saying is with most all of them, it's an ounce and a gallon once a week that you spray this on. And then they talk about a mild infestation and then severe infestation. So there's no real descriptive of what's a mild to um, severe. I mean, I can show you pictures of what I consider severe and what I consider mild. And I don't know if a mild infestation in their world just happens to mean if there's bugs, that's a mild infestation. If the bugs are everywhere, that's a severe. I'm not really sure what they're what they're talking about there. But from usage rates, now, if you don't have any problems, I guess that's preventative. If you're spraying one ounce a week, that's kind of self-explanatory. And it would be great if that works for all these different bugs because it seems to be one ounce per gallon per week seems to be their typical um, routine. Well, the, right there, they actually had some contradicting information, right? If you scroll down a little bit. Okay, let me just tell me tell me where you're saying. Right it there, now. it says general preventative application. It oh, says yeah, right a here. half ounce per gallon for cuttings, clones. Oh, I guess it goes up to a half ounce to one ounce. And then, like they say down here, preventative. Yeah, they're, they're well, I guess, you know, no, I guess, I guess the concern fine. would be that the rooted clones and the cuttings may be more sensitive because their plants aren't as hardy at that stage. I'm not really sure what their mentality behind that was other than just to get you using one product through the whole cycle, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a typical advertising thing that you want someone to always use your product. Now, what I found interesting was, so if it's a mild infestation, then you're doubling the dose and you're applying it every three days to try to get it under control. So I kind of understand that if you have bugs, you're trying to get them under control, but still you're doubling the dose uh, on that stage. The severe infestation, now you're going, you're doubling it again. So you're going to four ounces per gallon every 24 to 48 hours, up to five applications. That's That can get quite costly. I know sometimes it's not always the cost, it's the results that we're looking for, but when I looked at their pricing and we can go to their pricing here in a second, but it was, it was a, a lot just, I think it was, I think it was like $35 or something in that range for four ounces. And so if, it, if you have a severe infestation, you have to pay $35 just for one gallon of sprays that, that may or may not you know, be enough to cover your grow, depending on how, you know, how many plants you have and how big it is. That's an that's extreme concern uh, just from a pocketbook standpoint. So it seems to be consistent across the, the, the thing with severe infestation. They're going you know, three or four ounces. So, four, so let's just say it's four ounces. Uh, that can get quite costly in the pocketbook. Uh, I know that they're by the gallon, it's close to, it's above $400 a gallon at least. And I think a pint was almost $100. So that's not, uh, you know, a pint, about $100 is going to get you, that's 16 ounces. So that might get four gallons worth of spray. That can be quite costly, especially for an oil that I'm fairly confident we could take this into a lab and we could, uh, get all the oils are in it, just like it says what's in it. And we could tell, we could make it a lot cheaper than what they're offering out there. But here's the things that, that I thought were a little confusing. The relative humidity, they want the humidity to be between 50 and 60%. I, I, I'm guessing that's when you spray it. I don't know if it's after you spray it, but if you're spraying outdoor or in your vegetable garden or, or anything, you can't control the outside humidity. It'd be nice if we could control the weather like that, but we can't do that. Inside, they, some people may be able to get the humidity down, but you know, if you're growing canna plants, you want a higher relative, relative humidity than that anyway. Then the other things that were, um, you know, they wanted to keep your uh, 
temperature below 70 degrees until it's under control. Well, that seems a little unrealistic in the outside world and in the grow world, because, you know, when you have grow lights on, it's really hard to keep your temperature that low. So I'm not really sure what their reasoning was behind this. I'm not really sure why they wanted to, to keep the temperatures in those ranges. Do you have any thoughts on that, Mark? You know, it's it's really interesting. I I, gen, I genuinely am, and I'm a big proponent of organic yield. I make it clear the whole channel knows that already. But as I, I, although as I listen to you, I am also someone that is strong enough to be like, okay, what do I, what am I, I'm looking for what I disagree with you as you explain sure. this, you know, sure. I, I genuinely am. And I'm also just trying to take a bigger, uh, bigger, like what are, what are my pet peeves when I go through pesticides and fungicides? And I'm talking mm-hmm. about specifically for herb plants or essential oil plants. I'm trying to get the oil, those oils to or do as a consumable or an ex- extract and they become concentrates. And I don't like using oil-based products because whether it's nano sized or not, they fuse to the other oils. They stay behind, you know, and they have their yep. own boiling uh, points. And until someone can prove to me that my own experiences around boiling uh, points and temperatures and how to separate them through distillation processes, and, and until someone can explain to me why that doesn't, that science doesn't work, I'm still not going to be a big, uh, you know, until that science can say, Mark, you know, this won't mix because of this reason and blah, blah, even though it's an oil and whatever until someone can actually explain that to me i i'm always going to be a proponent of not using oils for essential oil uh, when i'm trying to get essential oils off the plant yeah i, I agree with you you and know then, like you said too the temperature you know yeah. it's like every room every room is writing 80 degrees you yeah. know and the relative humidity yeah, like you said, some people are under control, but a lot of people, they might be able to keep control, but when they're spraying this product on five times a week, you know, yeah. the the humidity in the room's going to be, you know, writing in the 80s almost the whole time. Well, so. one of my concerns with the, the up to five applications, it goes back to that um, spray and pray. I sprayed this and it's mm-hmm. oils. I, you know, covered my plants till it dripped off like you do with most products. Um, and then I got sprayed again. And then how much oil am I building up to me with oils? Oils don't remediate that fast. They're, you know, they're not an aqueous solution. They don't mix. They don't mix. You know, oil, everybody knows oil and water doesn't mix. So you've got a water supply issue. It, it, it might be getting to that. And, and I'm not really sure there was a lot of detail on the beneficial on how safe this was around beneficials. If you're someone who releases ladybugs or predator wasp or, or, or predator mites, um, I'm not really sure about the safety of having this around those or right afterwards, either, either, or, um, so that's, that's, that's a particular question. The other little thing I went to was, um, and guys, as yeah, well, let me, let me open it up real fast. Here it is application. Got, here it is the safety. Let me open the safety thing. So, um, safety data sheet. I'm sorry, Mark, I interrupted you. No, no, it's okay. I was just saying, guys, as you go out there and you're looking for uh, different types of pesticides, fungicides, the, this part of the sector of the industry isn't well documented. You know, it's, uh, it's there's a lot of marketing and why you should buy it. But even though, again, even though Hole owns his own pesticide fungicide company, I think it's incredibly important to to do what he's doing. Of course, you know, I've had on the other videos, it's like, well, it looks like a sales pitch. Guys, listen, we're we're pulling up their own materials, uh, safety and data sheets. You know, we're going to their website and taking what they're telling you to do. And we're just explaining it from our own perspective. We're not reading it differently. We're reading right what, what they're what they're telling you to do. We're just giving you a different perspective to the situation and saying, hey, can you see it from this perspective? Do you agree? If you don't agree, it's OK. Keep purchasing the product, although like I said, there's not a lot of people that are making the actual efforts to go through the systematic process of, you know, is there anything that that's what they're telling you to do that's conflicting? What is their material data sheet says? What what else happens, you know, beyond just this? And yeah, that's so I just want to share that. Hope, please continue. Sure, sure. No, no worries. And, and yeah, this is not to. I never want to necessarily put down any other product. Obviously, because I own one, I think mine is the best, and I would, you know, wouldn't be selling it or behind it if I didn't, but these are other products and, and maybe they have their place. And, and I can totally respect what these guys um, went through because they said, Hey, let's try to come up with something and let's try this, try that. And they, they came up probably with their own secret sauce um, in their garage or something in the beginning, especially because it's oils and, or maybe they have more science behind it uh, that they did, which is fine. 
trying to come up with something better. And, and, and the oils are, are uh, considered, most of them are considered on the organic space. So I, I respect that. I get that. It's just, I have um, nothing against the products or the people behind them. It's just the substance are oils. And I just, I'm just not an oil proponent of using oils on plants. I, I believe in the plant, the oils from the plants to be used. But if I'm growing a certain plant, the only oils I want to be in that or come from that are, are you know, or germane to that that plant that they create their own. So this is the safety data sheet. And as I said right here, you can see this, the FIFRA 25B exempt uh, insecticide fungicide. And I highly encourage everyone to, to look that up. It's an EPA thing um, on our website. I think we have it somewhere where you can actually look at the whole page and it has a list of all the oils that are out there or substances out there that have been deemed to be organic in nature, um, but organic's not always safe. If you really get down to it, there's some organic substances you wouldn't want to ingest or get on you, but yeah, they can send it to organic. Pardon for us? Oh, sorry. Can you pull it up for us? I'll pull up the, the, the sheet. Mm -hmm. um, so now you can see it says U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is called active ingredients eligible for minimal, minimal risk pesticides. And so essentially, um, and this you can download this from our website. You can also go to the EPA website. So essentially anything on this list, and there's a, there's a long list, you see cedarwood oils, um, has specification for some for non-food use, some is allowed for food use, um, and go through here and you can see, you know, it has all these, even citric acid that we're familiar with and a couple other products is in there. It's a fermentation product, uh, but it has, I mean, there's even dried blood. Imagine that. <laughs> so maybe if you cut your finger and it gets on the plant, it's okay. I don't know. Sodium lauryl sulfate. Or, so, or laurel sulfate that we're familiar with that's in some other products too is an emulsifier. So this has a list of all of these. Well, that's just a really, uh, this is probably the end of the list of zinc. So this is, if you take one or more of these and create a product, you can go straight to market. You do not have to, uh, you get to claim the exemption of this EPA minimum risk exemption. That's why you'll see the uh, the 20, the FIFRA 25B is, is what, it's, what everybody uh, calls it by. And you're able to create a marketing product that EPA doesn't sign off on it. They don't, they don't regulate it. It's not, it's not really controlled by them. It's just uh, under this, this little exemption. I have a feeling that the EPA wishes they'd never done this, but um, because now that's sometimes you'll see this so many products coming to market. And if it says fit for 25 B, that means they just said, Hey, let's throw this together and put it out there. doesn't mean they're not have some effect to some degree. It's just uh, because they have to have something off this list, at least one product. It's just, um, I like things that, um, or maybe because I had to go through it, that the EPA has to review and sign off and have their scientists look at your, you know, the studies and, and everything that was done to say, yes, this is safe. And yes, this does match the claims that you made. So that's, that's just, whether it's ego or a little personal thing, that's, that's just kind of why I, I, I don't have as much faith in things that are on this list. I don't think there's anything wrong with holding other companies to a standard, you know, and I'm not saying a standard that because you had to go through it, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you didn't have to go through it. You could have did exactly what they did, yeah. you know, but you didn't, you held yourself to a higher standard and now you're making the effort to teach and ever educate people what the other type of standards that are out there and mm -hmm. how to identify products that went through those standards. Yeah. I appreciate that actually. Sure. Okay. So like, like there's a difference, like in the in trifecta has drano oil in it and drano is allowed for food use geranium oil. However, it's not. So you, so something, this, this might be something good for some people to use because trifecta may be great use on, on ornamentals, you mm -hmm. know, non consumable products. If you're not going to consume it, maybe, you know, then it doesn't, doesn't bother me as much. What I, I guess where, where my hangup gets in with the oils and things are really on products that uh, humans are going to consume when it comes to cannabis, they're going to extract it, smoke it, eat it. Um, and then obviously with all your edible food crops, that's also my concern. So this may be something good for your audience too in the future to uh, earmark and look at their ingredients of anything they're going to buy and spray on there. If they're going to use one of these type of things that have some of the oils or these products in there and just see, Hey, is this safe to use on my, you know, my garden, on my tomatoes, if you're using it on your uh, geraniums or you're using it on your azaleas or whatever that you're not going to be eating, well, then maybe it's not that big a deal to you. But if it's something that you will be consuming, I just think it's good to always uh, double check and look at this. So that food, non-food use is, is kind of interesting. All right. Let me go back to what I'll do. So I'm going to go back to um, 
So this so this is the trifecta crop control, and you can see where they're they're headquartered or where this was was at the time and uh, they've updated it since 2016. So it, it must have been out or they've been working on it for a while. Now, when it comes to these ratings here, I believe the higher than, so this basically has caused a skin irritation, causes eye irritation, don't get it in your eyes, hands exposed. This is some of the precautionary statements. So when it's a four, I believe the, yeah, the lower, the, the higher the number, the better, the lower the number, um, becomes uh, a little bit more of an issue. So it's a Scott. So right here at the top, it'll tell you it's an irritant to skin and to eyes. So you don't want to get this on your skin and uh, you don't obviously want to get it in your eyes, but most things you're not going to, you know, you're not going to spray in your eyes, but getting on your skin can kind of be somewhat of a concern because you tend to, you know, things that spray, you tend to get your skin and I always look for things that are skin safe. And if it's dangerous on your skin, I always worry about, well, is it safe on the plant? But apparently this is, so th this kind of goes in through uh, the chemical blend of, and it's all these minimal risk ingredients that we just showed on the last screen from the, the list that the government puts out. So this kind of has weight by percentages and it tells you, you know, this has, now their soap is proprietary. I don't know what type they're considering soap because they call it proprietary, but um, everything else has a uh, chemical number that you, know, you can look up that's considered, uh, even though they're oils are considered, a, there's a chemical registry number that, that that ties to with it. So it has a flashpoint. I'm trying to think there was something else in here that I thought, here it is. Mild skin irritant, eye irritant, inhalation, you know, tells all these different things that you always want to check this before you use something, not after you use something and you drink it or get it in your eyes or whatever, because then it's like a little, a little bit late. So it's always good to, to always encourage people to read all this before. Oh yeah. Here was something I found kind of interesting. The pH was very caustic and acidic is, you know, below seven and caustic is above seven, um, like a pH. So this has a really high pH to it, which I found kind of interesting. I know our product is, you know, six, eight to seven, two. So we're right there the same with water. So I always look at to see what the competitors, um, where their pH is. And this has a really high pH. And I didn't see anything in the usage instructions about pH in your water to get it down lower or anything like that. I imagine this is probably one of the reasons why it, that it uh, probably works good on molds. Your, your molds. Yeah. On the molds and the mildew things type stuff, because it's caustic and it'll, it'll imbalance the pH of the molds and kill it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but this was just something I thought was kind of interesting that it was uh, that high of pH. That's pretty caustic. Um, yeah, it definitely makes me wonder what they're using and they're probably using, having, it's probably lye. This was, this would probably is probably as their proprietary soap is lye. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Lye soap. Else yeah. is going to take it up that high in a, on the pH in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really sure unless you put a lot of, um, you know, unless you were using, um, well, power, like power, like, you know, like, um, a power SI type stuff. Um, if mm. you're using some type of, um, um, things like that, I would think it would be silica. Sorry, silica. I, I had to think for a second. Silica, um, is a high. Even in their process, don't they, when they're processing silicon to mm -hmm. silica, they're also using lye as well, aren't they, in their process? I, th I think it depends on the, the the company, but yeah, I think there's something like that. So anyway, uh, so anyway, has the, the routes of exposure just tells you a little bit about carcinogenic. None of the components they think are carcinogenic, which is which is good to hear. So anyway, this is just this is just something I, I was going through the SDS that I thought was something interesting to uh, that you should always read. Any anything you're going to spray on something that you're going to consume or smoke or, or or be around, or that really I guess I would think any plant you're you're going to be around, or that your animal could be around, or that your kids could be around in the backyard or something like that. You really want to read all this and just go, what are the precautions? Because I've read things um, on certain uh, products that may be very effective uh, for their usage. But uh, you need to sequester your animals or, or have your kids not play in the backyard for a day or something like that, just because you don't want to get exposure to it because it can cause damage. So anyway, let, let's, let's let, me, let me stop the share here and I will. Um, so this is their screen. This is their uh, their Web page and Mother's Nature's Choice for Healthy Plants and Happy Harvest. And, and they are using um, things that are considered organic. So mm -hmm. over here, if you look on their pricing. 14, yeah, here it is. Four ounces costs uh thirty four dollars and ninety five cents. Can you see that? Yeah, absolutely. Four ounces or, costs thirty five bucks. Or let me get, let me just, I'll do this. I'll just go straight to their shop. We'll see, because they offer an they offer a ready to use product too. That's it's kind of that's just a dilution of that. So here we go. So four ounces. And this is a, their shop page. It's thirty four ninety five. No, uh, it's, it's thirty five dollars. If you have a severe a severe problem, you know, that's $35 a shot and that's only for a gallon. 
Yeah. You know, and if it takes I mean, you a couple of gallons to spray something, it's going to get kind of expensive. So there's 16 ounce, which is, you know, that's, that's um, basically what we call a pint. Uh, that's almost $100. And uh, that's a little extreme. Um, uh, how much is your 16 ounce? Oh, the, the organic 16 ounce now, um, I believe is 34, $35 for 16 ounces, something wow. like that. Wow. So it's, We've yeah we've really gotten it down. We've up the we upscaled the production so that we can get the price lower for everybody. Uh, so even though we feel like we have a superior product, um, we we know we need to be at a competitive price with everyone else, uh, just because they're all kind of painted with the same brush. But so like a thirty two ounce, which is a hundred hmm. is one hundred fifty dollars, which is just two pints, and then they're a gallon because obviously you know on the scale the bigger you get the uh, usually less expensive, but they're four nineteen, um, almost they're four hundred twenty dollars basically a gallon, and that's you know this is MSRP, so there might be places that offer discounts, but still that's that's a quite a bit when you may be using four ounces a gallon of spray, so it's only going to get you so far even at that even at that size, uh, and then I believe their largest one is a two point five, which is basically a thousand dollars, and I know the home gardener usually doesn't want to spend that much on something that's not going to last that long. Um, they do say some things on the site about uh, on the product info side. Let me, let me click on this. That let's see. So we looked at the comparison chart. We looked at the safety data sheet. And I believe on the this one. Yeah, they just had some good stories in here. I, like I said, I do like their website. They did a nice job laying it out. That's marketing. You know, it's it's if you're buying marketing, then that's why I think sometimes people go with products that they go, oh, this looks like good marketing and this sounds good. I think I understand where they're going with this. And then they just buy it. They don't really dig in. But um, that's kind of what it, uh, kind of occurs here to some extent. Now, can you still see my screen here? Absolutely. Okay, I just want to make sure. So the application guidelines... We, can, we already kind of went through some of that it was just, it looks like it doesn't take much because uh, they're saying a half ounce a gallon. But then if you, this must be, you know, for prevention that you don't have any bugs. So if you don't have any bugs, then obviously it's not a, not, not much of an issue. And, and you can use low dosage and just saying, I'm trying to keep every, everything at bay, but uh, you know, they do kind of do the same thing, drip or foliar spray. And then, with different stuff so this is this is kind of just their online website or the one i showed earlier because i did the the, the download printable version uh -huh. but i don't know do you have any questions about anything that comes to mind on this i mean um it's a nice website uh it's expensive product especially for an oil i know it's a combination of oils and maybe some of those oils are more expensive to, to obtain but um you know, at the end of the day, you're using an oil and it's going to cost you, you know, on the low, I mean, on the high side, if you only buy by the four ounce, $35 a gallon. And I don't know how far a gallon is going to get you if you have a large uh, garden. I don't really have any questions. You, you kind of provided and showed me what's on their website and you walked through what's on their website for me. Mm -hmm. And now it just, I'm able to kind of just digest that information and what I kind of already know and what I like and dislike for me, it just, this is just a similar product like many other products on the market it just seems like they have more of the what else is in the in the other products i kind of call it the kitchen sink product um just because if you look at the list of the ingredients you're like wow they threw everything at it or i used to think but like again i think i said it earlier because of the name is trifecta that people they used you know what's in three different products and threw them in one mm -hmm. uh type of type of uh modality or method methodology or something like that so that's just what it occurs like to me but again you know there i've heard people who really like it uh you know like there's the sit i've heard i've heard people say this great things they've got testimonials in here that it worked good for whoever it was you know so does it work it must work to some extent but is it an oil and we all kind of are starting to learn about how oils will slow the plant down they'll clog the stomata so they don't breathe as well um, until they eventually go away, but the oils also are going to soak in your plant. So just be aware that if you use an oil-based product, uh, you're going to have to give it some time of not spraying in order for that oil to work its way through the plant and not, you know, to have a pure plant of whatever you're extracting from. If you were, you know, if you were growing um, herb gardens, I would never use this on an herb garden. It's got clove oil and all these other oils in it, but that's going to kind of mess up my, uh, you know, my herbs because if I was doing herbs for extraction or herbs for the oils out of them, then, you know, that's kind of defeats the purpose. I, and I also just think about my dog in general, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm not down there on my nose sniffing before I pee. Yeah. Right. 
And we've all seen when something irritates the dog's eyes, he comes up with the paw and he's like, yeah. like this, you know, and, and, and a lot of times we don't even think about what's going on with the eye, you know, hit the dog. We're just thinking he's scratching his eye, but he's probably Ooh. sniffed something that's irritating his eyes. Oh, so, yeah. or they'll, or, you know, dogs will, will go out and eat grass because it helps their digestive system. Mm -hmm. um, when I used to uh, have a cannabis garden in the vegetative room, my cat would go in there and chew on the leaves. Uh, I think it helped her somehow because she was an indoor cat and she mm -hmm. didn't get the grass outside for her stomach or whatever. So, you know, animals that, uh, go and chew on vegetation just for whatever reason i think it, there's a safety issue there that people forget children playing around in think in areas if you know children gets in your garden and, and you don't want to get this on their skin those that's that type of stuff too is, is always a concern absolutely so i think I, I just think people just don't think about it as much and and hopefully through your channel the they'll people will start thinking a little bit more about you know they may think about what they buy but they don't think about what goes into what they buy and hopefully we're starting to have sort of a culture moving toward that where people are a little more conscious about what goes, the inputs that go into their garden and their vegetables and everything that they consume. Ornamentals, I don't worry about as much because you're not consuming those, they're in the environment. So there's there's always that consideration if they're indoor plants, but really the, the concern is, is around what are we putting in our bodies? Guys, if there is a pesticide or a fungicide, or an herbicide, uh, just any one of these uh, these types of products you want broken down more, whether it's in Home Depot, Orchard, whatever it is, please leave a comment down below. Holt will come back through, examine the label for us. He will examine the MS uh, DS sheet. He's going to just explain things that even to me, I wouldn't know because I'm not in this, uh, this part of the, the industry. And he has actually had to go through the EPA registered list. I think the Organic Shield, you yep. guys went through the USDS uh, Organics approved list as well. I yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on the, the uh, products. it's called the NOSB, the National Organic Standard Board list. So um, Organic Shield's ingredient is listed on, that's the Oversight Committee. What it's called is the NOP, the National Organic Program. And that's a list of organic inputs. And if you are a certified organic company or a certified organic uh, farm or something like that, you can only use inputs and inputs being anything that you fertilizers, insecticides, whatever you uh, add to your garden or to your, your crops. Um, have to be on that list or, or you cannot be considered organic. And so our product is on that national organic product list. Uh, the active ingredient is, is on that. So that's the sucrose octanoate, the sugar ester is, is considered safe. Do you know how many pesticides and fungicides are on, uh, are, have been approved from the, on that list? Did I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to, to look at it again. Cause it's, it's, uh, it's not laid out as cleanly as the fit for 25 B list, but there is a list of things maybe we can do um, something in the video. future, something okay. in the future, and kind of talk about that. Um, what's on that list that's considered uh, that you can utilize and still be uh, call yourself organic? I mean, for the home gardener, they're not as worried about you know they're not going oh I have to be so strict because they they don't have to to worry about that label going to the market or or being scrutinized or anything like that. Um, the cannabis base and the commercial cannabis base they have to worry about certain things because everything goes to that bottleneck of testing to make sure there's no residues of anything left over in the plant. So that's kind of um, why most of the oils you'll see will say, don't use it um, the last four weeks of flower because they know it'll show up on a test. Um, and and it, takes, it takes that long to work itself out. Oh, thank you so much, sure. guys. Discount code is in the description below. Uh, go and check it out on Perfect Gardens or on dropsofbalance.com. Uh, this product's Organic Shield is available on both sites. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone. Man, uh, watering, in my opinion, is one of the most complicated processes involved in growing this plant. One of the biggest mistakes I see from new folks is either overwatering or underwatering. And they, they both have very similar signs. You know, we know that underwatering and overwatering can often lead to droopy leaves.